Warning, the following reading contains content that some listeners may find disturbing. Listener discretion is advised. Two stallions were racing down the road as they were pulling a carriage. They were shocked from what they had seen moments ago. Just what the hell was that thing? The first stallion asked. Damned if I know, but I sure as hell don't want to find out. The second stallion answered. Meanwhile, inside the carriage, a young mare named Sadie sat in silence. Her eyes were filled with tears and she was shaking in fear and shock. After tonight's events, she just wanted to close her eyes to forget everything that had happened. But she knew that even if she did close her eyes, nothing would change. A middle-aged mare sitting across from her looked at Sadie with worry. She slowly approached her. Darling, I don't know what you've been through tonight, but I'm right here with you. Whenever you're ready, you can talk to me. The mare said in a motherly tone. Sadie sniffled and looked at the mare. Thank you for rescuing me. Sadie said, a tear running down her cheek. Of course, darling. I'm sorry my boys and I were skeptical. The mayor replied with a gentle smile. What's your name? The mayor asked. Sadie. Sadie replied. Well, it's nice to meet you, Sadie. I'm Daisy Bell. Outside are my boys Clyde and Weston. The mayor said. Sadie smiled a bit, but then her smile faltered. She began to quietly sob. Daisy immediately hugged Sadie to comfort her. Don't worry, it's going to be all right. We ain't too far from the next town. Me and my boys can get you to the hospital. Daisy said. Why did this have to happen? Sadie asked through tears. Tell me everything that happened. Take your time. Daisy replied, then broke the hug. Sadie wiped her tears and took a breath. My cold friend Leo and I were on vacation. I was nervous, but he always made me feel at ease. We were headed to a cabin in the woods, but then I saw a post of a missing mare named Rose. Sadie said. A missing mare? I think me and my boy saw a poster of a mare named Rose. Red hair, blue eyes. Daisy asked, and Sadie nodded. I thought so. Continue, darling. Daisy replied. I... Leo, we should turn back, but the train we took wouldn't be back until Monday. So we continued on our way to the cabin, and that's where I heard a deep and creepy voice say, Delicious meat must eat. It scared the hell out of me, and I told my cold friend about it. He called out, but no one answered, so I thought it was just my imagination. Sadie explained. Daisy remained quiet and continued listening. It, it wasn't long before we made it to the cabin. I went inside while Leo grabbed our stuff, and I looked around the place for a bit. When I looked out the window, I saw a shadowy figure. I could tell it was big, but I couldn't tell what it was. Suddenly, my cult friend surprised me. Then we went upstairs to get settled in. We started to unpack, just as I was about to put some clothes in the drawer. I saw a newspaper about ponies that were missing or were found brutally murdered. Sadie said. She sniffled, then continued. I told Leo about it, and even he thought it was spooky. I told him we should leave, but he always had a way of reassuring me everything would be okay. We cooked dinner, and then we ate and went to sleep. Then I had this awful nightmare. I heard whispering. Then some pony said my name. Four voices warned me about the creature. Things took a dark turn, and that's when I saw four ponies. They had no eyes, and their flesh was rotten. They even had sharp teeth. One of them I recognized as Rose. Sadie explained, and Daisy's eyes widened a bit. She and the other three ponies yelled that I died too. And then I heard the voice of the creature. 
When I turned around, it lunged at me, and I screamed. I quickly woke up and realized it was just a nightmare, but then... That nightmare came true. Sadie said, her voice breaking at the end. Her eyes began to fill with tears again. My girlfriend wasn't in bed. He usually doesn't get up in the middle of the night. I went downstairs and called for him, but he didn't respond. I entered the kitchen, and a creature was eating him. <laughs> Sadie said, now sobbing. Daisy couldn't believe what she had heard. She felt very sorry for Sadie. How could something like this have happened? Sadie didn't deserve to go through any of this. Oh, Sadie, I'm so sorry for what you've been through. It's a good thing you caught me and my boys at the right time. I'm sorry about your cold friend. Daisy said, then she hugged Sadie again. Thank you. He was always there for me. No, he's gone. <laughs> Sadie said between sobs. It's gonna be alright, darling. I promise. Daisy said reassuringly. Meanwhile, the two stallions continued pulling the carriage running down the road. Suddenly, they could see lights in the distance. That must be the next town. The blue stallion Clyde said. The red stallion Weston rolled his eyes. Yeah? Obviously. Come on. Weston replied. The two rushed towards the town. Several minutes had passed until they finally reached it and came to a stop. There were lots of ponies who were talking, walking, or doing their own thing. A mare passing by welcomed them to the town. Daisy poked her head out of the carriage. Hey boys, why'd we stop? She asked. Before they could answer, Daisy could see they were in the next town. Oh, we're in the next town. She said, then she saw a sign that had the town name. Worthford? She asked. Yep, that's the town name, Mama. Clyde said. Look around for the hospital. One has to be around here. And do it fast. Daisy said. The two stangers nodded and quickly got a move on. It wasn't long before they saw a 30-story building with a large red plus on it. They quickly rushed towards it. When they got close enough, they came to a stop. The door to the carriage opened and Daisy got out. She turned and offered Sadie her hoof. Come on, darling. Let's get you inside. She said with a gentle and reassuring smile. Sadie accepted Daisy's help and carefully came out of the carriage. She landed on the ground, but then she felt a sharp pain in the back of her leg. She yelled, then winced. Careful, Sadie. You're still hurt. Come on. I got you. Daisy said. Sadie wrapped one of her front legs around Daisy. Are you ready? Daisy asked. Y yes. Sadie answered. The two began to walk towards the entrance. Sadie had to hop a bit and keep her slasher leg off the ground. Weston and Clyde were about to follow them. No, you two stay out here and watch the carriage. Daisy said. Yes, yes mama. mama. Weston and Clyde replied. The doors to the hospital slid open and that's when Daisy and Sadie entered. A lot of ponies were there. A nurse receptionist sat at the desk and was looking at a clipboard. Nurse! Daisy called out, catching the nurse's attention. I have an injured mare here. The nurse quickly called two medical staff members down. When they arrived, they placed Sadie on a stretcher. All right, let's move. One of the medical staff members said. They turned the stretcher and began to push it. Daisy was about to follow them, but the nurse receptionist stopped her. I'm sorry, ma'am. You have to wait here. The nurse receptionist said. But... Daisy began to say, but then she sighed. <sighs> she hoped Sadie would be okay.
Meanwhile, somewhere in the forest, a stallion and his mare friend were walking down a trail, looking for the perfect camping spot. Uh, are you sure we're going the right way, Ursula? Asked the stallion. Ursula was using her magic looking at the map. <laughs> Don't worry so much, Onyx. We're going the right way. Ursula replied with a giggle. I uh, hope you're right. I just don't want to get lost. <laughs> Onyx replied with a giggle. Ursula rolled her eyes with a smile and continued looking at the map. Let's see. We're here, but need to walk a few more... Before Ursula could finish, Onyx suddenly gasped. Ursula immediately put down the map and looked at him. His eyes were wide with fear. What's wrong? She asked with concern. Uh, uh, Ursula? I think we should head back now. Onyx said, sounding spooked. Why? Ursula asked, even more concerned. B -b 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 because I've read way too many horror stories about couples dying in the woods. Onyx said, then pointed his hoof at something. Ursula looked over to see a strange creature looking at them. It was large and white. It had no tail, mane, nor eyes. But it had razor sharp teeth and long black fingernails that looked sharp enough to pierce bony flesh. However, there was something else. Some fur on his face was missing. The missing fur was replaced with burnt, exposed flesh. Ursula's eyes widened as she gasped, dropping the map. What is that? Ursula asked, stepping back. I, I don't know. Onyx replied, also stepping back. The creature licked its lips, then began to step towards them. I'm in a hurry, but I guess it won't hurt to have a quick snack. The creature said, then smiled sinisterly. Onyx and Ursula could see pieces of flesh in the creature's teeth. They were also covered in blood. Suddenly, the creature lunged at them. Onyx dodged in time, but the creature managed to tackle and pin Ursula to the ground. <coughs> Ursula yelled in fear and pain. Ursula! Onyx yelled, then frowned. He rushed towards the creature with anger in his eyes. Get the fuck off of her, you son of a bitch! He yelled. The creature smiled, then looked over at him. When Onyx got closer, the creature quickly raised his arm, then smacked him away with force. Oh! Onyx yelled, then he hit the ground. Be patient. I'll get to you in a minute. The creature said, then turned his attention back to Ursula. It smiled at her sinisterly, then leaned forward. Its tongue came out of its mouth and began to lick Ursula's face. Ursula whimpered in fear and disgust. Saliva from the creature's mouth dripped onto her. The creature retracted his tongue then stared at Ursula. Ursula looked into the creature's eye sockets. Please don't! She said in fear, tears slowly streaming down her face. Sorry, but I have to eat. The creature said in a dark tone then started to feast on Ursula. Ursula screamed in fear, pain, and agony as she felt the creature's teeth pierce her flesh and tear it apart. Blood started gushing as the creature was beginning to enjoy its meal. Onyx managed to get up, but his attention was quickly cut when he heard Ursula's screams. He looked over to see the creature feasting on her. No! He yelled, his eyes wide with horror and tears. After a few seconds, Ursula's screams came to a stop and blood began to ooze. The creature was now feasting on her organs. Onyx could do nothing but watch in horror. Ursula's eyes moved and they met Onyx's. It was the last thing Ursula saw before her body went completely limped. Onyx gasped in horror. His mare friend was now gone. The sight was sickening and Onyx felt the need to throw up. After the creature finished, it turned its attention towards Onyx. Now for dessert. The creature said with a smile. Onyx felt even more sick to his stomach when he could see bits of Ursula's flesh in the creature's teeth. 
There are also bits of organs. The creature began to move slowly towards him. Onyx watched and shook in horror. Something inside him was telling him to move, but he was trapped in the gaze of the creature. Why would my body move? Onyx thought. The creature was getting closer, a sinister smile on his face. Onyx began to breathe shakily. Sweat began to drop down his face. Damn it, Onyx! Run! Move! Get out of here! He yelled and thought. However, his body still didn't move. The creature was now inches from his face, looking down at him. Before Onyx could react, the creature grabbed him by the neck and lifted him into the air. Ah! Onyx screamed, then the creature licked his face. Its tongue was covered in slobber and blood. Onyx shuddered in fear and disgust, making the creature chuckle. <laughs> I hope you taste as good as she did. The creature said, his head turning toward Ursula's body. Onyx looked over too, but then he quickly looked away. The sight of Ursula's body sickened and saddened him. The creature turned his attention back to Onyx and licked its lips. Onyx tried to get free, but the creature didn't let go. What's the hurry? Stick around for dessert. I insist. The creature said, tightening his hold of Onyx. <gasps> Onyx winced in pain and stopped struggling. He had now given up and was ready to face death. Do it. Just get it over with. Onyx said, sounding sad and defeated. He shed his eyes and hoped his death would be quick. The creature opened his mouth and began to bring Onyx near it. At least, I'll be with Ursula again. Onyx thought as the creature brought him closer to its mouth by the second. Suddenly, the creature stopped. Onyx opened his eyes and discovered he was away from the creature's mouth. The creature stared at him. Onyx looks back at the creature confused. It was going to eat him. Why did it stop? After a few seconds of staring, the creature gasped and dropped him. <laughs> Onyx yelled when he hit the ground. No. No. The creature yelled and took a few steps back. It placed two of his paws to his head as if it had a huge headache. Onyx's eyes widened in confusion. The creature looked at Onyx. It had an expression of sorrow and regret. G go! Get out of here! Why you can! I can't control it for long! The creature yelled, but his voice was different. It sounded like a stallion who was scared. The creature yelled, then Onyx quickly got up. What? He said in confusion. He couldn't believe what he was seeing. First the creature was going to eat him and now was telling him to run? What the hell is going on? No! I can't! I won't! The creature yelled, moving around frantically. Onyx watched in horror. The creature turned to him again. What are you waiting for? Go! Hurry! Before it's too late! The creature yelled, still holding his head. Onyx didn't know what was going on, but he took the creature's advice and started running away as fast as his legs could carry him. No! My mail is getting away! The creature said, his voice back to normal. It tried to chase after Onyx, but his body wouldn't move. No! I will let you eat or kill any pony else! The creature yelled, his voice now sounding like a stallion again. The creature shook its head and growled. You can't stop this! The creature yelled back in his normal voice. The creature lifted his left paw, then aimed it at itself. I will stop you! The creature yelled in the stallion's voice. No! No! The creature yelled in his normal voice. The creature's left paw extended its claws and aimed for its neck. No! 
The creature yelled in its normal voice, then it quickly grabbed its left leg with its paw, stopping the attack. Yes! Die already, you bastard! The creature yelled in the stallion's voice. Uh, no! I am a control here, not you! The creature yelled in its normal voice. It extended a claw in its right paw, then slashed its left front arm. The creature yelled in the stallion's voice. Even though the creature was in minor pain, it shook it off and shook its head. <sighs> that was annoying. Now it's time for my second meal. The creature said and was about to take off after Onyx. Suddenly, it stopped. No. As much as I hate seeing Emil get away, I still need to find what I'm looking for. She and those other three ponies couldn't have gotten very far. The creature said. Wasting no time, it took off as fast as it could. It sniffed for any trace of Sadie and her rescuers since. After a few seconds, it picked up their scents. The creature chuckled evilly and smiled. <laughs> Ready or not, here I come. It said as it continued running. Back at the hospitals, several minutes had passed while Sadie's injuries were tended to. Not only did she have a slashed leg, she had a few bruises from her fall, but luckily nothing was broken. She had a bandage wrapped around her slashed leg. It was recommended that she stayed for the night. She told the nurses what happened, but they didn't believe her. She sat in silence, listening to the heart monitor. Suddenly, there was a knock on the door that got her attention. She quickly looked over to see Daisy standing in the doorway. With her was a nurse that had led her to Sadie's room. Hey, darling. Daisy said, entering the room as the nurse left. Hey. Sadie replied with a sad smile. How are you feeling? Daisy asked. Not so great, to be honest. Sadie answered honestly. I know it's been a rough night for you, with what happened and all. I can't imagine what you're going through right now. Daisy replied. I told the nurses what happened, but they didn't believe me. They looked at me like I was crazy. Sadie said with a slight frown. They didn't believe you? I figured something like that would happen. Daisy replied, then she let out a sigh. What do you mean? Sadie asked. Me and my boys believe you. Hell, we saw that creature ourselves. But if other ponies were to hear it, they'd think you were crazy. Daisy explained. Sadie frowned, but she knew Daisy was right. She sniffled and stared out of the window. There was silence for a moment, then Sadie spoke up. That creature... She said, catching Daisy's attention. Leo and I were supposed to have a nice, relaxing vacation, but it was ruined. Sadie continued, still looking out the window. Sadie? Daisy began to say. It taunted me, appeared in my nightmares, then it ate my cult friend. Sadie said, her sadness slowly turning into anger. I loved Leo. So much. That thing took him away from me. That thing ruined my night, my life. The smile it had when it locked eyes with me. The way it taunted me as it chased me. Sadie said, frowning angrily. She gritted her teeth. Daisy started to get concerned. All those missing ponies, most found brutally murdered. They didn't deserve what happened to them. Leo didn't deserve what happened to him. Sadie yelled with anger. Daisy opened her mouth to speak, but words didn't come out. 
I'm gonna kill it! I'm gonna fucking kill it for what it's done! Sadie yelled. Whoa, 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 wait a minute! Sadie, I know you're upset, but you have no idea what that creature can really do. Dizzy yelled, trying to calm Sadie down. I don't care what it takes! I'm gonna kill that fucking creature, even if I die trying! Sadie yelled. Excuse me? Said a voice catching Sadie and Daisy's attention. They looked over to see a doctor standing there. He had a dark mane and tail, dark silver fur, and golden looking eyes. Oh, uh, hi there. Who are you? Daisy asked. Sorry for the interruption. My name is Dr. Silver Wing. The doctor said with a friendly smile. Oh, nice to meet you. I'm Daisy. Daisy replied, introducing herself. Are you here to check on Sadie? She asked. Not exactly. Dr. Silverwing replied. Daisy was confused and Sadie raised an eyebrow. Dr. Silverwing approached Sadie. I couldn't help but overhear you say something about a creature? Dr. Silverwing asked. Yeah. Sadie answered, her eyebrows still raised. What did this creature look like? Dr. Silverwing asked. Daisy looked at Dr. Silverwing suspiciously. Listen here, fella. Is there something you know that you're not telling us? Daisy asked. Please calm down, ma'am. I just need to confirm a suspicion. Dr. Silverwing replied, then focused his attention on Sadie. What did this creature look like? He asked. It's large and has white fur, including razor sharp teeth and long black fingernails. Sadie answered. Dr. Silverwing's eyes widened. He swallowed hard and took a breath. Um, are you alright? Daisy asked. Yes, sorry. Dr. Silverwing answered. Wait a minute, you know what she's talking about, don't you? Daisy asked. Yes. Dr. Silverwing answered hesitantly. Daisy's eyes widened and Sadie gasped. And you survived, just like Sadie did. Daisy said. That, that is correct. Dr. Silverwing replied. How did you encounter it? Sidney asked. Dr. Silverwing took a breath. I was out camping with friends two years ago. We were sitting around the campfire, but then we started to hear strange noises. One of my friends went out to investigate, but he never came back. Me and the rest of my friends started looking for him. It wasn't long before we found him. His body was mutilated. Most of his organs had bite marks on them. The sight was sickening. Dr. Silverwing explained. Sweet Celestia, Daisy said. Sadie's eyes were wide with the shock. Dr. Silverwing continued. It gets worse from there. My friends started freaking out, wondering who could do something so horrid. We suddenly heard deep, evil chuckling from behind us. When we turned around, that's when we saw it. That creature thing looked down at us. Before any of us reacted, it grabbed my other friend and snapped her neck. Next, it tore her head off her body. Dr. Silverwing explained. Sadie covered her mouth with her hoof. Dr. Silverwing continued once again. And after that, it grabbed my last friend and stabbed him in the eyes with its claws. Then it tore him in half. My body was frozen in shock. I had just watched all three of my friends get killed in front of me. When the creature was done, it turned to me. I don't know why, but for some reason, it told me, This is the part where you run. And so I did. I ran as fast as I could through the forest. The creature chased me. I could hear its heavy footsteps. I tried hiding a few times, but it kept finding me. It grabbed me when it got the chance, but I fought like hell. When I broke free, I kept running and running until I couldn't hold it anymore. For the rest of the night, I stayed where I was until morning. Dr. Silverwing said, finishing his story. 
Sadie and Daisy were shocked at this. They couldn't believe what they had heard. I don't even know what to say. I'm so sorry you went through that. Daisy said. Thank you. It, It hasn't been easy. I told the authorities, but they didn't believe me. Dr. Silverwing replied, then he turned to Sadie. You had an encounter tonight, didn't you? He asked her. Yes, my girlfriend and I were in a cabin on vacation. I woke up from a nightmare and realized he wasn't in bed. I went downstairs. That's weird. Sadie trailed off. She frowned and nearly gritted her teeth. I saw that fucking creature. It was eating my cold friend until it saw me. Like you, I was chased and I ran. I hid behind a tree and I saw a large stick. I threw it to distract the creature and ran. I kept running until I encountered Daisy and her sons. They saved my life. Sadie explained. I'm sorry to hear about your cult friend. It's a good thing you ran into this mare and her sons at the right time. Dr. Silverwing replied. Sadie looked down. She was still frowning, but her eyes started to water. I have another friend who I think was a victim of that creature. His name was Flame Burst. He was my best friend and went missing three years ago. The authorities searched, but they never found him. Soon I found out that he wasn't the only one. More ponies started to vanish without a trace. Some of them were found, but they were brutally murdered. However, Flame Burst was never among them. Dr. Silverwing said, This creature thing ain't nothing but trouble. I don't doubt all of them ponies were victims to it. Daisy said with a frown, It needs to be stopped. Sadie said, now looking up with a frown. Dr. Silverwing and Daisy looked at her. That thing ate my cult friend. Ruined what was supposed to be a nice and relaxing vacation. Sadie said, now gritting her teeth. For Leo, for all the ponies that fell victim to the creature, it's gonna fucking die. She said, making Daisy gasp and Dr. Silverwing's eyes go wide. Meanwhile, outside, Weston and Clyde waited patiently. They were hoping everything was okay. You think they're all right in there? Clyde asked. I sure as hell hope so. I I can't get that... that... whatever the hell it was out of my head. I ain't... never seen anything like that. Yep. Whatever it is, it likes to eat on ponies. There's a lot of creatures here in Equestria, but I ain't never heard of one that eats ponies. Just, what the hell kind of creature was that? Clyde asked. I don't know. Unless... Weston trailed off. Clyde looked at Weston, waiting for him to finish his sentence. Do you think it's some kind of... demon? Weston asked. Clyde's eyes widened. D- demon what, what makes you think that? Think about it. That thing don't look like it's from Earth, and it's evil looking. If... if it is a demon, then where did it come from? Damned if I know, but it's a good thing we got away from it. Weston said. Just as Clyde was about to respond, the sound of evil chuckling was heard. (laughs) Deep, slow, evil (laughs) chuckling. Weston and Clyde's eyes went wide. The sound of slow and heavy footsteps began to make their way towards them. Is... is that... Clyde trailed off, his breath shaky. Weston didn't answer and breathed shakily. The footsteps got closer. Weston and Clyde slowly turned their heads. Their eyes went wide. There, 
Under a lamppost, the creature stood, looking more sadistic than ever. Blood was around its mouth, and it had a pure evil smile. Blood stained its teeth. The creature smiled at Weston and Clyde while staring at them with sadistic tendencies. Looks like I found you, it said, then chuckled. <laughs> Weston and Clyde slowly began to step back. The creature slowly began to walk towards them. Run! Weston yelled, quickly turning around. Clyde immediately turned around and the two started running. The creature chuckled again, watching them run. I love it when my prey plays hard to get. Luckily, I always play hard to get away from. The creature said, then it roared. It immediately chased after Weston and Clyde. Up ahead, Weston and Clyde were running as fast as their legs could carry them. They could hear the creature chasing them. Despite its size, it had great speed. Holy shit, it's gunning on us! Clyde yelled. The two kept running as the creature continued to chase them. They weren't too far from the hospital doors. If they can make it, they will be safe. Or will they? I'm going to enjoy eating the flesh off your bones. <laughs> the creature yelled and started laughing. As they continued running, Weston saw a rock a few feet away from them. It wasn't very big, but an idea popped into his head. I got an idea! He yelled, then ran towards the rock. What are you doing? Clyde asked. Weston didn't answer to continue running towards the rock. He was almost near it. Come on, I'm almost there. He said quietly to himself. The creature continued chasing them. After a few seconds, Weston made it to the rock. Wasting no time, he picked it up and turned around. He looked at Clyde. Keep going! He yelled. But! Clyde began to say. Just do it! Weston yelled. Clyde continued running and Weston turned his attention towards the creature. The creature looked at him and smiled evilly. I guess you can be the first of mine. Before the creature could finish, Weston immediately threw the rock. Eat this, you son of a bitch! Weston yelled. The rock headed towards the creature's face. Within seconds, it struck the creature in the face. Oh. The creature yelled and came to a stop. Weston wasted no time and began to run. It wasn't long before Weston caught up to Clyde. Running side by side, the two finally made it to the entrance of the hospital. They rushed in and ran to the front desk, surprising the nurse receptionist. Oh! Hello, Chintipotes. What can I do for you? She asked. Lady, what floor is Sadie on? Our mama is visiting her right now. Clyde demanded. Sir, I need you to calm down. The nurse receptionist said. There ain't no damn time to calm down. Some demon creature is out there right now. Tell us what floor Sadie is on. Weston yelled. Many ponies in the hospital looked over at Clyde and Weston. General Holtz, if you don't calm down, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. The nurse receptionist said with a frown. Weston angrily frowned at the nurse receptionist. Damn it, lady, listen to us. We need to find Sadie and our mama, and you need to get every pony out of here before- Suddenly, the sound of glass shattering was heard. Every pony in the hospital gasped and looked over. There, standing near the entrance, was the creature. Every pony's eyes widened. The creature smiled and it picked up the scent of multiple ponies. More delicious meat. A full course meal. Or, I can have some fun here. Maybe both. It said darkly. Every pony stared in silence, their eyes wide with fear. Without warning, the creature suddenly extended its claws and slid a pony's throat. The pony yelled, blood beginning to spread from their neck. Other ponies immediately screamed in horror and panic. Weston and Clyde's eyes were wide with shock and horror. The creature roared, then it grabbed another pony. The pony screamed and the creature immediately bit her head off. 
Blood spurted and the creature tossed her body to the side. Within seconds, blood began to splatter everywhere as the creature stabbed, sliced, and ate other ponies. The sight was sickening. Weston and Clyde immediately turned to the nurse receptionist. What floor is Sadie on? Weston asked. The nurse receptionist answered, her eyes wide at what she was witnessing. Get out of here while you can! Clyde yelled, then he and Weston ran for the elevator while the creature was distracted with other ponies. Meanwhile, back in Sadie's room, Daisy managed to calm Sadie down. Darling, I know what happened to you tonight was awful, but you can't go around thinking you can beat that creature thing on your own. Like I said, you don't know what it's capable of. Daisy said... I know. I'm sorry. I'm just... I'm just so angry and sad right now. Sadie replied, tears running down her face. Daisy gently pulled Sadie into a hug as she sobbed. There, there. It's gonna be okay, you hear? I don't know how, but that evil creature will get what's coming to it. Daisy said. Dr. Silverwing felt sorry for Sadie, despite only knowing her for a few minutes. He nor Sadie shouldn't have to go through this. He lost his friends and Sadie lost her cult friend. Why did this have to happen to them? What the hell did they do to deserve this? What happened to them was cruel and unfair. All the victims of the creature didn't deserve such a fate. Suddenly, the sound of hoofsteps were heard rushing towards them. They looked towards the door and that's when Clyde and Weston rushed in. They had horrified looks on their faces. What the hell? What's the matter with y'all? Y'all act like you seen a ghost or something. Daisy said. Mama, we need to get the fuck out of here right now. Weston said. Why? What's wrong? Daisy asked with concern. That creature thing is here. It's killing every pony below us right now. Clyde answered. Daisy, Sadie, and Dr. Silverwing's eyes widened. Oh, sweet Celestia. Daisy said softly with shock. How the hell did it know we were here? She asked. It must have traced your scent. Dr. Silverwing said, making every pony look at him. What, you mean like sniff us out? Daisy asked. Yes. Dr. Silverwing answered. Uh, who are you? Clyde asked. This is Dr. Silverwing. He had an encounter with the creature before and survived. Daisy explained. Really? Weston asked. Yes, but now isn't the time for a story. We need to get the hell out of here. Daisy said, then she turned to Dr. Silverwing. Doc, is there any other way out of here? She asked. I'm sorry, but the only way out is downstairs towards the entrance. Dr. Silverwing replied. Shit. Daisy said, looking down at the floor with a frown. Plus, we can't leave just yet. Dr. Silverwing said. What? Why the hell not? Clyde asked angrily. Because I have a plan to kill that fucking creature once and for all. It's time for it to pay for what it's done. Dr. Silverwing replied with a frown. How was the plan? Sadie said with a determined and serious tone. Every pony on the first floor was dead. Most were eaten while others were brutally murdered. Blood and guts were everywhere, from the walls to the floor. However, it didn't stop there. The creature had gone to the second, third, and fourth floors to satisfy its hunger and bloodlust. Many rooms and hallways had blood and guts everywhere as well. Once the creature was done on the fourth floor, it headed towards the fifth floor. Meanwhile, Sadie remained in her room. She was quiet and waited patiently. Minutes of silence passed until she heard footsteps. They were slow and heavy. Sadie gasped and quickly grabbed the fire extinguisher Dr. Silverwing gave her. She was prepared for the creature to come to her room. 
Even though she was scared, she wasn't going to let her fear overpower her. The slow and heavy footsteps got closer and closer. Sadie swallowed hard and took a breath. Come on, Sadie. You can do this. She said quietly. After a few seconds, the footsteps stopped in front of Sadie's room. She watched the door intensely. Suddenly, the doorknob began to rattle. Sadie frowned and took a step back. What happened next made her eyes widen with shock. She heard a familiar voice. Babe? The voice said. Sadie gasped. L Leo? Sadie asked in shock and disbelief. Y yeah, it's me. Are you okay? Leo asked. But you're dead! I saw you get eaten! Sid replied. She couldn't believe it. Leo is alive? It, no, no. That was an illusion, babe. That's what the creature wanted you to think. Remember when the creature chased you? That was me trying to get your attention, but you just kept running. Leo replied. Th this can't be real. Sadie said in disbelief. It's really me, babe. I know everything that happened tonight was scary, but I promise it's going to be okay. Just open the door and I'll explain everything, okay? Leo replied. Sadie wanted to open the door, but something in her gut was telling her not to, and she wasn't so sure if she could trust Leo yet. Leo, can I ask you a question? Sadie asked. Can it wait? Please open the door. Leo said. Please, babe, it's important. Sadie replied. Okay, sure. What is it? Leo asked. When's my birthday? Sadie asked. Can this wait? I really need to talk. Before Leo could finish, Sadie cut him off. Please, babe. Sadie said. Okay, okay. I I'm sorry, babe. It's uh, April 20th. Leo answered simply. Sadie frowned and prepared the fire extinguisher. Wrong, asshole. It's June 27th. She replied, then took another step back. Oh shit, uh, sorry, I messed up. Uh, you know I'm forgetful sometimes. Leo replied with a chuckle. Nice try, but I'm not opening the door. Sadie said with a serious tone. What? Come on, Sadie, I, I know I fucked up and I'm sorry. Please, open the door. Leo said. Sadie didn't reply. She just stared at the door with a frown. Babe, open the door. Please. Leo said, this time something was off about his voice. It didn't sound right. Open the door now. Leo said in a more serious tone. I'm not fucking stupid! I know you're not Leo! Sadie replied with a frown. I said open the door or I'll rip your fucking guts out, you bitch! Leo yelled with aggression and anger. There was a hard bang on the door and Sadie gasped. The banging continued and there was a sound of wood breaking. While it was scary, Sadie didn't move. She heard the sound of the creature growling in frustration as it tried to break down the door. Sadie's heart began to race, but she knew now wasn't the time to be scared. No matter what, she was not going to let that creature get her. She frowned with determination. Come on, motherfucker. I'm waiting. She said quietly to herself. <laughs> yelled a voice. There was a final bang on the door and it came off the hinges, falling to the floor. The creature stood in the doorway, ready to get Sadie. There you. Before the creature could finish, it was met with a fire extinguisher. Sadie began to use it on the creature, its content sprang on the creature's face. <laughs> the creature yelled in surprise and jumped back. It bumped into a wall. Uh. The creature yelled. Sadie rushed out of the room and continued to use the fire extinguisher on the creature. You like that? How about some more, bitch? Sadie yelled with a frown and a smirk. Uh. The creature yelled. Suddenly, the fire extinguisher stopped working. Sadie's eyes widened. Oh, shit! No! 
She yelled and tried to use it again, but it didn't work. The creature managed to get up. It wiped the contents of the fire extinguisher off its face. <sighs> You're going to wish you hadn't done that. The creature said in a calm but serious tone. Fuck you! City yelled. And without warning, she swung the fire extinguisher and struck the creature in the face with it. <laughs> the creature yelled, then Sadie took off flying. Despite her injuries, her wings were okay. The creature shook off the pain. Hey! Chicken shit! Sadie yelled, catching the creature's attention. I changed my mind. Instead of eating you, I'm going to kill you nice and slow. The creature said with a frown. You'll have to catch me first, pussy. She said, then flew up some stairs. The creature roared, then chased after her. The chase was on. The creature reached the stairs and began to run up them. The space was a little tight, but it wasn't going to let that stop it. The creature yelled with anger. Aww, you mad bro. Sadie taunted. She was further ahead, but the creature couldn't see her. This made the creature even angrier. The chase went on for a few minutes as Sadie taunted the creature. It wasn't long before the creature came across an open double door. It leads to the outside. The creature ran towards it and it was now outside. But it wasn't on the ground. It was on the roof and it was pretty high up. The creature didn't mind this however. It was focused on finding Sadie. Looking for me? A voice asked, catching the creature's attention. It turned its head towards the source of the voice. Sadie stood there. Even though the creature couldn't see her, it could smell her because of her scent. There you are. The creature said, then slowly made its way towards her. I'll have to admit that I am impressed. No pony has ever evaded me and survived this long. Well, except for one pony. The creature said, then chuckled. Are you kidding me? Can I just say one more thing? Sidi asked, sounding defeated. The creature stopped in his tracks. It thought for a few seconds. Hmm, very well. I suppose I can let you have your last words before you die. What do you want to say? The creature asked. This. Now! Sadie yelled. What? The creature yelled in surprise. <laughs> yelled a voice. Suddenly, something long and sharp stabbed the creature in his side. It yelled at pain and surprise. Ya ain't killing or eating any pony else tonight, you some bitch! Weston yelled, holding the handle of a surgical tool. You son of a! Before the creature could finish, it felt something else stab it in its back. Ah! The creature yelled, then looked behind it. Clyde stood there with a frown. He also had a surgical tool he stabbed the creature with. Sadie yelled. Clyde and Weston retracted their surgical tools and began to stab the creature multiple times. The creature yelled as blood began to leak out of his stab wounds. It's time you paid for your crimes. Clyde yelled with a frown. The creature continued to yell in pain. Daisy! Now! Sadie yelled. Daisy rushed out of her hiding spot carrying a bucket full of alcohol. She rushed towards the creature. Boys, out of the way! She yelled. Clyde and Weston retracted their surgical tools and got out of the way. When Daisy got close enough, she splashed the bucket of alcohol on the creature. The alcohol hit the creature in the face where its burn was. The alcohol caused intense pain on the burn. The creature roared in pain. Your turn, Doc! Daisy yelled. Then that's when Dr. Silverwing came out of a hiding spot. He also had a bucket full of alcohol. I'm going to hit where it hurts! He yelled, then flew towards the creature. 
When he got close enough, he splashed alcohol all over the creature's stab wounds. <laughs> the creature yelled with intense pain. Now it's time for the final part of the plan. Clyde yelled. Not yet! We need to bring it down! Dr. Silverwing said. Let's do it! Daisy yelled. Dr. Silverwing pulled out two surgical tools. He tossed one towards Daisy and she caught it. The four ponies rushed towards the creature. The creature heard them coming and tried to move, but it was too late. The four ponies stabbed the creature. Clyde and Wester had gone for the back of its legs. The creature yelled, its back legs now feeling weak. It could barely stand on them now. Daisy and Dr. Silverwing had stabbed it in the chest. The creature spat up some blood. That is enough! The creature yelled. Using his front legs, it struck the four ponies away from it. <laughs> they screamed as they tumbled across the roof. Sadie's eyes widened as she gasped in horror. The surgical tools were still webbed into the creature, but it didn't care about that. The creature began to chuckle. <laughs> you fools! Did you honestly think you could kill me? It asked, then it began to limp towards Sadie. Now, where were we? It asked. Sadie's eyes were wide. She stepped back as the creature was coming near her. It takes a lot more than that to kill me. You know something? This plan of yours was well thought out. It's a shame it was a failure. <laughs> the creature said, then chuckled. Even though you'll be gone, I'll always remember you. The creature added. Sadie backed up some more until she felt the edge of the roof. She gasped, realizing she couldn't back up anymore. Oh shit. Sadie whispered. It wasn't long before the creature was finally close enough. I would ask if you have any last words, but you've lost your privileges for that. Now you die. The creature said, then extended his claws. Sadie's eyes widened even more. Is this it? Is this her final moment? Suddenly, something landed next to Sadie. She looked over and saw it was a chrome lighter. Sadie, do it! Dr. Silverwing yelled. What? The creature yelled, looking behind him. Sadie wasted no time and grabbed the lighter. She opened it and lit it up. She frowned and looked at the creature. Bang, motherfucker! She yelled and threw the lighter towards the creature. The lighter struck the creature and set its fur ablaze. The creature yelled in pain and agony. Sadie flew into the air to get out of the way. The creature thrashed around in intense pain as it felt the flames burn its skin. The others watched with a mix of shock and relief. Suddenly, due to the creature's thrashing, it slipped and fell off the roof. The creature screamed as it began falling towards the ground. <laughs> After several seconds, its scream stopped as soon as there was a splat on the ground. Blood and guts splashed everywhere. It was over. The creature was no more. Sadie, still flying, looked at the creature's burnt corpse. Rest in shit, you asshole. She said with a frown, then landed on the roof. She sat in relief and the others came over. They looked over the edge and saw the creature's burnt corpse. Damn, that's one hell of a nasty burn. Dr. Silverwing said. Yeah, but it's finally over. That thing can't eat nor kill any pony else anymore. Daisy said. Clyde and Weston nodded. Sadie said nothing and Daisy looked at her with concern. Are you okay, darling? She asked. I am now. Sadie replied. 
I know it don't seem like it now, but you're gonna be okay, I promise. Daisy said reassuringly. Thank you. Sid replied with a sad smile. Well, now what? Weston asked. Before any pony could answer, Clyde's eyes widened. Um, y'all? He asked. Every pony looked over and their eyes widened as well. There in front of them stood a ghostly apparition of a red pony. He was smiling at them. Dr. Sibylwin gasped and stepped forward. <gasps> the flame burst? Is that you? He asked. Yeah. Long time no see, buddy. The ghostly apparition flame burst replied. Y you're dead? How did this happen? Dr. Sibylwin asked, his eyes wide. I was on my way home. But then these three cultists attacked me. They made me a sacrifice for some creature named Typhon, but it went wrong. Instead of Typhon being summoned, I was transformed into a thing that's now a burnt corpse. Flamebrush replied. Wait, so you were the creature? City asked. No one yes. It's complicated. But let's just say that me and someone else shared the same body. I was aware of everything. All those ponies that fell victim to the creature? I tried to take control and stop it, but no matter what I did, it was futile. I couldn't stop it from eating your cult friend. I'm sorry. Flameburst replied. City looked down and sniffled. She took a shaky breath and looked at Flameburst again. It's okay. I don't blame you for this. Now that the creature is dead, you're free. City replied. Yeah. And I want to thank all of you. With the creature gone, it can't feed anymore. And I'm finally free. Flameburst said. Flameburst, I... I had the feeling that you went missing. You fell victim to the creature, but this is... Dr. Silverwing began to say. I know. It's crazy, huh? Flamburst asked. Suddenly, Flamburst began to fade. Flamburst! What's happening to you? Dr. Silverwing asked. It's time for me to go home. Goodbye, buddy. Enjoy your life while you can. One day, we'll see each other again. Flamber said with a sad smile and a tear running down his face. W wait! Flamber's! Don't go! Dr. Silverwing yelled, trying to reach out. Unfortunately, Flamber's completely faded. He was no longer there. Flamber's! Dr. Silverwing said, a tear streaming down his face. Goodbye, old friend, he said. Sadie came over and hugged Dr. Silverwing in support. It's okay. He's in a better place now. I know Leo is too. Sadie said. Dr. Silverwing gave a sad smile and nodded. So, what now? Clyde asked. We move on with our lives. And Sadie, I know we haven't known each other for long, but you're welcome to stay with my sons and I for a while. Daisy said. The five ponies looked out on the horizon in silence. Five years have passed since the defeat of the creature. The hospital was now an abandoned building and the creature's corpse was no longer there. As for the victims, the authorities decided to make up a cover-up story to not spread panic. While they are still alive, the whereabouts of Sadie, Dr. Silverwing, Daisy, Weston, and Clyde are unknown at this time, including the fate of Onyx. But let's hope they are enjoying their lives and have recovered from that awful night. <laughs>